Uh, next, you're going to hear from uh, the mayor of Batesville, Jerry Autry, who is going to then introduce Sonny Simmons, the economic developer for Panola County. Thanks. I'm not going to talk a lot about um, Batesville South Panola Tigers, but I'm going to talk a little about economy here today. But uh, <clears throat> we are noted for a little football up there. Well, anyway, we're a small town in Mississippi and uh, about 7,500 people. I don't want you to get discouraged if you live in a small town because you can do this because we did it. So uh, what we did is we got involved about, uh, I've been trying for about two years to get tax credits to rehabilitate all my units in Batesville that were in very bad condition. And Wish Camper, we were trying to work together to get this done. And then lo and behold, the governor comes up with this plan. And as, as you know, you can get tax credits and you can rehab your uh, old dilapidated buildings. And that's what we did. We were doing it right now. And as you saw, we had 102 units. We've uh, had an investment of about uh, $3.8 million that are coming into our town now. So this is just one aspect of what this uh, health care summit can do for you. And don't be discouraged if you're a smaller town like Batesville, Mississippi. You just got to have the want to to get it done. Uh, I'm going to say a little bit about Batesville. I want to brag a little bit. Well, we usually rank about 30th in uh, retail sales tax collections in the whole state consistently. We are small, but we have a pretty big trade area. Uh, as you might know that we had um, the uh, GE Aviation kind of put us on the map. Uh, we got together with the governor and, and with a, a lot of people from the Mississippi Development, and we did get that uh, factory, and uh, we're so proud of that. We've, um, we're really uh, moving ahead with that, and it's expanding, too. Um, let me see. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm kind of nervous here, but I'm going to be okay. <laughs> you know how it is. I, I'm getting, they're limiting me on the way I can talk up here. They got a, uh, they've got a, a timer on it. You know how a politician, it's pretty hard for them to do that. But anyway, we do have a 30-year plan that we uh, have every uh, 30 years. I won't get to see the next one. But anyway, uh, Bob Barber helped us uh, get this plan up, and, uh, and we're going to incorporate this health care summit into this plan. And hopefully, and there goes another one of my men right there, brought us right there. He helped us too. Anyway, um, let's see what else I'm going to talk to you about. I'm going to let Sonny Simmons talk in just a few minutes. I'm going to give him plenty of time. Oh, yeah. I'm going to brag a little bit more here. Uh, it says we are, uh, in, of course, we, you know we're in un, un, uh, uncertain economic times. But we have had a half million dollar increase in our overall sales tax uh, added up over the last five years. So we must be doing something good around there in Batesville, Mississippi. So I'm going to... Um, Cut it short here. I'm going to let Sonny Simmons and don't you bore him, Sonny. Come on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. These are exciting times. I know if you've had the opportunity like I have to meet all the morning sessions, you've got to be excited about all the opportunities that are coming to, this, to communities throughout our state. We've done a good bit already trying to prepare for that. We're going to continue to do more. But I want to talk to you today to tell you how kind of we, how it all came about for Batesville, Mississippi, to start this endeavor. As the mayor said, Wish Camper, a company that specializes in rehabilitation of dilapidated type properties throughout the country, have been trying to get tax credits to allow them to rehabilitate about 102 units of low-income housing in Batesville. There are three separate complexes. Uh, with the governor's initiative and the new regula regulations that are taking place now, we were able to help them and access about $750,000 worth of tax credits. That allowed them to use that and leverage that, those tax credits, to, uh, to get the funding necessary for the rehabilitation of those units. Which, as I said, the, uh, the investment's going to be, the initial investment's going to be about $5.6 million on those 102 units. I'm going to show you some examples of what they start with. They start with apartments that are, I mean, in total disrepair, unlivable. This is probably an extreme case of that, but some of them are not far from this example. The finished product looks more like this when they're finished. The outside of those apartments are dilapidated as well. When they're finished, very, very nice, livable apartments, high quality of life for the residents. They displace the residents during the construction phase, move them back in, 
but they also put a very stringent set of regulations on these people when they come back in. They have to maintain these apartments. They, we, we've viewed some of these. The mayor and I took a tour of some here in Jackson, and they are as nice as you'll ever see. They're well kept. You don't see any uh, anything around the apartments as far as garbage or anything like that, or or toys in the yard or anything. They're as nice as any kind of apartment anywhere. They're very well taken care of, very well managed. Some of them have, are fenced, uh, even with gated uh, type access. So that's what's taking place in Batesville. So that's really our immediate uh, results of the, of the, of the health care study. Now let's talk about where we're located, what our plans are for uh, going forward. Batesville is located, as you probably know, in the northwest part of our state. We're only 45 minutes, though, from the Memphis metro area. We're 20 minutes from the University of Ole Miss. We're 40 minutes from Clarksdale and about 45 minutes north of Grenada. So strategically, I don't think you can be in a much better location where we are. Uh, so we hope that that's going to help us, as it has in the past, with other industry sectors, bring the health care industry and attention to the health care industry to our area of the state. Wes Ziegler, who is now the CEO of Tri-Lakes Medical Center, said it this way. The way I see it, the stronger the health care industry is in Batesville, the easier it becomes to recruit high-quality employees in industry. He's right on target here. Outside this sector, it doesn't matter. When a prospect comes to see us or see you as other communities, one of the top five questions they're probably going to ask, tell me about your health care facilities. They're concerned about a quality health care for their employees. It's so important, it's becoming more important all the time. We took the middle route. On the three criteria at the bottom, you have to be within a five-mile radius of a hospital with a certificate of need of no less than 375 beds. We didn't qualify, of course, for that. But we did fall within the five-mile radius of three contiguous counties that met the minimum criteria. And that was Tate County to our north, Lafayette County to our east, and, of course, in Panola County. That brought us up to the 392 acute beds, certificate of need beds, that, required, that actually qualified us for a health care zone. I know this map not, may not be very, very clear, but using our hospital as a nucleus, uh, hold on, let me back up here. Using our hospital as a nucleus, the five mile radius takes in the entire city limits of Batesville. It also takes in our new industrial park, which is just outside the city limits at our airport. It's a 250 acre fully served industrial park that we opened last April. It's not only just a regular industrial park, it's quite a, it's, it's a state of the art. It's actually paved and it's guttered and it has a wrought iron fence across the front of it with, 40, uh, with brick columns every 40 feet. And, and it's, it's not just shovel ready, it's pad ready. We've got two 100,000 square foot pads, one 50,000 square foot pad. We have a courtesy car at the airport, which is in walking distance actually of this park. We already have our first location. They built there. They're already uh, in operation. We've just sold another 15 acres to another company. They will start building right away, and we've got a third company that's going to probably make a commitment within the next month. So that park is ideally suited. It's less than a mile from the interstate. We feel like that's what we're going to market for health care industries or like the uh, medical industry that, like injection molding companies, for example. That's something that you may not associate with the medical industry, but it certainly is. So that's one of our target markets already. We're going after companies like that and other medically related companies. This shows you the hospital as a nucleus here. It shows it also takes in our entire downtown area, and then our, and our industrial park we just talked about is located right here just outside the city limits. But the downtown area of Batesville is already developing, developing very quickly with medical offices. We have two doctor's offices there that didn't exist two years ago, dental offices, optometrists, pharmacies, and some other buildings that are available now that the other doctor, some other doctors have shown interest in. So we're going to help develop that area as well as the area around the hospital. Our hospital is growing in leaps and bounds, and that's good for all of us. Just a few years ago, they had about 150 employees. Now they're up to over 369 employees with 68 physicians. For a town of less than 7,500, I think that's quite impressive. Then that company, HMA, who's bought the hospital about two, a little over two years ago, has now invested over $42 million in that hospital, bringing it up to a new standard. They've increased the services of the hospital. In addition, they've done a complete renovation of their what they call their West Campus, which is a 57-bed behavior health care center. 
So they've invested a ton of money in that hospital, not only that, but recently they just purchased another eight acres of land that the city owns, and they're going to be building doctor's offices there. So we're going to expand that as well, and that still gives them room to grow. The impact to our community is this, though, from the hospital. From the 369 associates and doctors associated with that, we're looking at more than a $28 million circulation of annual payroll. We're also looking at a $6.4 million in uncompensated care. That was the latest we had in 2011. But they pay, an over, they pay over $300,000 in local taxes. And so you can imagine, as we grow this industry, as your communities grow this industry, you can imagine what that's going to do to your local tax basis. It's going to be tremendous if we do it right. Not only do we have a hospital that's growing, several years ago, we, the Panola Partnership, our economic development group, recruited Aravac Life Team to Batesville. Life Team, true, Life Team to Batesville. They're an Aravac helicopter unit, and they built a facility just behind the hospital. Not only do they have their facility there, that they built living quarters for their maintenance people, and it's a maintenance headquarters for their entire fleet. So that's another huge economic impact and another service that we can provide to patients coming into our area. Now this is the master plan. I think this is so important. If you'll look, the hospital located here, but the, pro the property located right here is owned by the city of Batesville. That's where the new doctor's office is going to be located. All of this property here, though, to our west, which is along the interstate and the property behind the hospital here is privately owned, and we have met with those, those landowners during this whole process of what we're trying to accomplish right now. And all of them know what we, our goals and objectives are to, to grow this healthcare industry. And they are on board with this to provide these properties at a reasonable price when we have prospects coming in for that reason. The Civic Center for the Base was located here. So it's going to be kind of a multi-use area that we can, we're going to continue to develop very quickly, we feel. We feel this with a targeted aggressive marketing strategies which we plan to implement. This is, comes from the study. that shows, and we ask them to be conservative with these estimates. We're looking at the possibility of about $120 million new investment by the year 2020, over 1,100 new jobs potentially, and approaching a $50 million annual payroll. That is a huge impact on a community of 7,500 people. But that's not going to be unique just to the Batesville at 7,500. Every community in this state is going to have an opportunity to capitalize on some of this that we're talking about here today. Uh, you can go the route we did by finding those three contiguous counties that meet that minimum bed requirement. There's not very many counties, I don't think, anywhere in our state that you can't couple with two other counties and meet that criteria. And so that gives you the opportunity as it has us. This study was provided by Pegasus and uh, Broadus Planning Group out of Austin, Texas. Did an outstanding job. They have representatives here with us today. They've guided us through this entire process, made it very easy for us to participate. And we're proud of the results of the study and it allowed us all of these opportunities. Here's our strategies going forward. We plan to be aggressive in our marketing efforts, much like we do with the other target markets right now. We're going to be developing marketing materials specific to the healthcare industry. We're going to be attending trade shows and whatever is necessary to get our message out. We're going to add the healthcare again, as we already have now, to one of our primary target markets, as we have automotive and injection molding, warehouse distribution, and others. We're also going to heavily explore our local resources, which are in close proximity to Batesville and Panola County. The University of Mississippi with a pharmacy school, now with, with the CME there, the Center for Manufacturing Excellence, uh, Northwest Community College with their great nursing program, two-year nursing program. We're going to try to sell again the Panola County Airport Industrial Complex for manufacturing, and then the land, as I pointed out earlier, adjacent to the hospital for health care development. We're going to work very closely with Mississippi Development Authority as they develop their strategies. They're our partner in everything we do already. I think they're planning possibly on putting a team together and having maybe a separate division to address health care. I hope that's the case. Have a bureau manager there that we can all talk to directly and work with them very, very closely as we move forward with this endeavor. A long-range goal is to make Batesville a regional health care destination. I think where we're located, I think we can do that. I think by working with the governor's office, working with the Mississippi Development Authority and others, that we can certainly find success there. I know you're excited as I am about this, so I challenge you to go home to your communities if you haven't already. Look at what's possible there 
and start doing the things that you need to do to bring the investment and the jobs related to health care to your community. Thank you.